let's discuss the three different tests included in the Naglieri General Ability Test. Uh, Dina, can you start with the verbal test? Long ago when Jack started, uh, Dr. Naglieri was saying, there's got to be a way to measure verbal ability regardless of the language that the student speaks with, without, without language. And we kind of percolated over that for a few years. And um, Jack came to us and said, okay, I've got, a, I've got an idea. And I'll just speak to the verbal part. A lot of it was based on Alexandria Luria's uh, language cognition. He is a psychologist who specialized in this area. And what we're doing in this, in this test, it's a verbal test that has no language, that has no words. So regardless of the language that the child speaks, they can use their conceptual understanding of language, how language is developed conceptually. Even though we all speak a different language, we are all, there's, not such, there's no such thing as a nonverbal person. We think with language. So basically the test items each, each involve a concept that's, uh, that's depicted through pictures. And what the student will have to do is look through, look at those pictures and find what's common in them and how they relate to each other. And they start off some of them very simple to begin with, and they become very complex. MHS uh, connected with uh, experts in, in culture and, ling and linguistics to make sure that the items that we're using were not biased against certain cultures. So for example, if we're looking at animals, there's certain animals that we couldn't use because they would be insulting to a certain culture or certain foods or certain experiences that we could depict on, uh, on a, through a picture. So what the students will have to do is think about what concept those, those items are representing and they'll do that regardless of the language that, that they speak because they're thinking about how they uh, how they think about those, relate to those. This test is not, the verbal um, I can speak to especially, it's not measuring anything that they will have learned in school or read in a book, but rather how they think conceptually. So it's measuring their thinking processes as opposed to what they may have learned. Dr. Naglieri, would you like to explain about the nonverbal section of the test? Sure. So the nonverbal portion of the tests is one that's made by using diagrams and shapes and colors and rotations and things like that. The student needs to understand the relationships of all these shapes to arrive at the answer. And it's very much like the Naglieri nonverbal ability test, which I published um, previously. And it has a funny title, nonverbal. Um, it, it's kind of like not the great, greatest definition, actually, because it tells you what it isn't. It doesn't tell you what it is. But it is a measure of general ability. And by that, what I mean is a foundational ability that allows you to solve many kinds of problems, whether they are verbal or so-called nonverbal or quantitative. It doesn't really matter. It's this foundation ability that is being measured. We call it general ability. And we can measure it using diagrams or as Dean has already described, using words. And as Kim will, decide, will describe next in the quantitative. I think everybody is familiar with the phrase that math is a universal language. And, it's, and the reason that, that people say that is because math is really the same all over the world. And um, regardless of the, the language that goes along with, math helps people learn and communicate. Uh, and so one of the big challenges with other tests that I have administered in order to to determine reasoning ability, especially in math, is the enormous amount of language that's necessary uh, in the directions of these assessments. And so when we were developing the, the quantitative portion of this, um, the questions are presented with numbers and shapes, and the, the students are um, asked to identify the pattern. So the, the relationships, the, the pattern, the sequences among numbers and symbols 
determine the reasoning ability of the student that's taking it. Uh, the directions are oh, very minimal. I think that we'll probably talk about that, that later. Um, but the, the quantitative reasoning piece of it does not involve any language. It's, it's just it's we are able to um, do this without confounding it with a, a lengthy amount of directions. The tests require students to examine relationships, patterns, sequences among numbers and symbols. And it's just basic math. It's basic math concepts. There isn't really anything complicated. There are no math word problems that have to be solved. And again, the, the um, questions can be solved regardless of the language that's spoken by the students that are taking it. 